This was a stunning moment when American Abrams tanks were seen in action in Ukraine for the first time. They were used to bombard Russian defense lines near the occupied town of Avdiivka. Drone footage showed U.S. tanks serving in the 47th Brigade, holding the defense line at Avdiivka until a week ago, when troops were ordered to withdraw. Now the Russians occupy the city but the Ukrainians defend the nearby lines and continue to attack their positions. The Abrams was seen maneuvering along the highway and firing at Russian positions. The footage was taken by a Ukrainian drone reportedly in the vicinity of Stepov in Ukraine's eastern Donetsk region. This was also one of the most exciting moments for Ukrainian troops when their artillery blew up Russian armored vehicles in the Luhansk region. Drone footage from Ukraine's 81st Armored Brigade showed several Russian armored vehicles moving towards Ukrainian positions. As you can see, the Russian armored vehicles are getting closer. They were within range of Ukrainian artillery. With the help of reconnaissance drones, they can use precision strikes against Russian troop positions. They launched several attacks that destroyed most of the Russian armored vehicles in front of this troop convoy. The Russian BMPs were forced to retreat, but anti-tank mines destroyed most and one was hit by a German-supplied hot mine. Ukraine's armed forces also shared videos of FPV drone attacks, stalking Russian soldiers in a wide-open field with no shelter. The video shows a bizarre incident in which a Russian soldier is trapped in the open by a Ukrainian suicide drone. Instead of performing evasive maneuvers, the soldier stands there, frozen, and accepts his brutal fate. Other footage also shows Ukrainian FPV drones harassing Russian troops with repeated debilitating explosions caused by continuously dropping grenades. Although the ammunition was not very powerful, it hurt Russian troops as it caused serious and life-threatening injuries. The attacks left Russian frontline units without full strength while efforts continued to evacuate wounded and reinforce dwindling units. For some reason, these types of videos always lead viewers to condemn war crimes, even though what is happening here is the legitimate targeting of enemy combatants. There is no time limit on the battlefield when someone is injured. Over the last day, 58 battles took place on the front lines. The Ukrainian army repulsed 18 Russian attacks in five directions. At the same time, Russia lost 1,000 troops, three tanks, 37 armored vehicles, and 49 artillery systems, Ukraine's Kapravda reported. Meanwhile, the Institute for the Study of War said in its new analysis that Russia hit Ukrainian forces in the country's northeast in an attack that could provide territorial gains for Moscow. This is a bad sign for Ukraine, which is struggling to get new military aid from the West after two years of full-scale war. Moscow is conducting a cohesive, multi-axis offensive operation along the northern part of its current front line in eastern Ukraine, seeking to achieve significant operational objectives for the first time in more than a year and a half of the campaign in Ukraine. Russia has been pressing Ukrainian defenses near the border of Ukraine's Kharkiv and Luhansk regions for weeks. At the same time, they also deployed resources to Avdiivka, the Donetsk city where key forces withdrew over the weekend. Moscow also made some progress around the Zaporizhian settlement of Robotyn, one of the few villages Ukraine managed to capture from Russia in its counteroffensive in the summer of 2023. However, Ukraine's counteroffensive in 2018 did not go smoothly, and Kiv attributed this to delays in arms deliveries from Western countries and dwindling ammunition stocks. Ukraine is still awaiting promises of more military aid from its biggest backer, the United States, which has languished in Congress since late last year. Delays in arms deliveries from Western allies to Ukraine opened the door to Russian advances on the battlefield. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said, complicating fighting along the front lines where Kremlin forces have seized territory. Strategic city last weekend ahead of the second anniversary of the war. Zelensky and other officials have often expressed frustration at the slow pace of delivering promised aid, 
especially as signs of war fatigue have emerged. European countries are struggling to get enough stocks to send a kiv, and $60 billion in U.S. aid has stalled due to political differences. This seems to benefit Russian President Vladimir Putin. Even so, more aid is on the way to Ukraine, as Sweden on Tuesday announced its biggest aid package so far, and Canada said it was speeding up the delivery of more than 800 drones. Behind this, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky released a video showing his country's pilots preparing for F-16 fighter jet training, and he touted the use of F-16 fighter jets by Kyiv forces in the war against Russia. Video published on Friday showed pilots preparing in Denmark on a plane made by Lockheed Martin, whose delivery to Kyiv it is hoped will help fight the war started by Vladimir Putin, now in its third year. Denmark and the Netherlands are the first two countries to donate 61 S-16s to Kyiv's forces, which Ukraine has long requested and are more advanced than the Soviet-era MiG and Sukhoi jets that Kyiv relies on. Denmark's first F-16 fighter jets are expected to be handed over to Ukraine this summer, said the country's defense minister Trolls Lund Poulsen. However, several conditions must be met for Ukraine to be able to use them. Poulsen said the coalition of countries providing the fourth-generation fighter jets is now working to put it all together this summer. Meanwhile, Belgium will transfer S-16s to Ukraine, but only in 2025, while Norway has confirmed that it will supply F-16s shortly.